It's time for Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. Greetings and welcome to Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. And this is lesson six. And as you can see, we have a new setting. Nothing but the finest for Lo-Fi Science Class. Can't you tell I hired an interior decorator uh, to get this all set up? I mean, it clearly was not just thrown up at the last minute. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, um, oh, and then we've got the electric guitar here today, so. Because we're going to be doing a song called Girl Talk, which is has a, a bit of a funky beat and a rhythm to it, so figured uh, let's change it up a little bit. We've been using the acoustic guitar for the other episodes. Um, let's, let's use the electric in this one. Um, and uh, for lesson six, as I said before, it's going to continue uh, from where we left off in lesson five, which was with earth science. We talked about continental drift in that video. And now in this video, we're going to talk about how continental drift um, was discovered to be accurate. And that was through the discovery of a new theory, plate tectonics. But there was a step in between continental drift and plate tectonics. And unfortunately, um, in the telling of the science story, it's often left out, or at least in the past it has been. Uh, fortunately, now people are starting to include this portion of the story, which is fantastic because it should be included. And probably one of the reasons why this was left out of the narrative was because the primary discovery in this middle section between continental drift and plate tectonics was made by a female scientist. And uh, in her day, the male colleague she work with, worked with got most of the credit for it, um, even though she did work side by side with him, and she's actually the first one to discover what we're gonna talk about today. So her name is Marie Tharp, and um, before we get into Marie Tharp, though, I do uh, want to mention, I, I didn't show you a picture of Alfred Wegener in the last episode. I mean, if you've seen our music video for our song Continental Drift, there's plenty of pictures of, of him in there, but uh, here he is, and... Um, I want you to notice this awkward misspelling right here. But since this is lo-fi science class and we're all saving resources, I can't reprint this. But notice his name here is not just Alfred Wegener, polar researcher, geophysicist, meteorologist, 1880 to 1930, but it is Alfred Fed Wegener. Yeah, so there you have it, Alfred Fed. <laughs> but um but uh, this story, the story today, the story of Marie Tharp, actually begins with the death of Alfred Wegener in, or Alfred Fed Wegener in 1930. Um, so around the early 1950s, Marie Tharp, here she is. Look how stylish. Um, Marie Tharp was a uh, geologist and cartographer, and um, she lived from 1920 to 2006. So she died not all that long ago. Um, and Marie Tharp um, basically got a job um, mapping the ocean floor. It, uh, there was a lot of new data coming in at that time in the early 1950s. Some of the data had come from World War II. Some of the sonar that was used during World War II to hunt for German U-boats was now being used to get a you know, more comprehensive map of the ocean floor. But you needed somebody who knew how to take that information and actually make a map out of it. And that was Marie Tharp. Uh, she was brilliant at it. Uh, what happened, though, is uh, something very, very interesting. So Marie Tharp noticed that in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, as she was mapping, there seemed to be this mountain chain that, um, see there, the, 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 yeah, look at that lovely lo-fi uh, drawing there. Um, <laughs> that's my rendering of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And, um, you know, mountains had been detected on the ocean floor for some time now, but what Marie Tharp noticed is that it appeared not merely to be a mountain range, but it appeared to be a rift. There it appeared to be a rift valley within that mountain range, meaning that the ocean floor was moving like this, not just staying still. And this was a big deal because remember, Alfred Wegener, as we learned from the last video, his idea of continental drift had been rejected many, many years before. So nobody was thinking continental drift at all. And when Marie brought this to the attention of her colleague, Bruce Hazen, he looked at it and he looked at her and he said, Marie, this is nothing but girl talk. So that's the title of our song, Girl Talk. Uh, that's the one we'll be doing today in a few minutes. But um, here's what happened. Marie was like, oh, girl talk, huh? Okay, so she went back and she double checked and, and she added more uh, to her map and uh, kept pulling in more and more data. 
And then she found this. She was looking at some, well, it wasn't this. This is my version of it. But um, she, uh, th this was seismic data, basically earthquake data from the ocean floor. And she noticed something interesting about it. Hmm. Just about every single one of these epicenters of these uh, underwater earthquakes on the ocean floor seemed to be right where she predicted that rift valley to be. So she took the, the seismic data and she laid it right over her map of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which she assumed to be a rift valley, and saw that those earthquake epicenters were precisely along that rift valley, which of course was strong evidence that those plates of the ocean floor, which they didn't call them plates at that time yet, but the ocean floor was actually moving in opposite directions. Now, nobody wanted to believe this, of course, because first of all, she was a woman. And then second of all, it, continental drift had been rejected. You know, let, why revisit that? You'll, you'll be a laughing stock. But her partner, Bruce Hazen, finally did come around. So he uh, went from calling it girl talk to finally admitting that Marie was right. He, he himself could not deny it any longer because she had so much evidence now and her map uh, was so comprehensive that he too began to uh, talk uh, in scientific circles about this crazy idea that there is a rift valley on the ocean floor pushing the plates of the earth apart. Um, and of course, um, eventually that uh, you know, was confirmed with uh, you know, visual observational evidence. And that observational evidence, of course, uh, I don't wanna say of course, you might not know. You probably, that's why you're watching this, right? But um, the underwater explorer, the famous underwater explorer, Jacques Cousteau, who also makes an appearance in our song. Uh, Jacques Cousteau uh, actually then took um, a, a ship down to the bottom of the ocean floor and filmed it and confirmed that that mountain range contained a rift valley right down the middle of it. And ever since then, uh, they, they took that idea, and by they I mean the scientists, and they began to run with it, and they developed the theory of plate tectonics. So between Alfred Wegener and plate tectonics, you have Marie Tharp basically bridging the gap between the two. And so that's why we're talking about her today, and that's why we're going to sing this song called Girl Talk. You guys ready? Here we go. A little Girl Talk. <clears throat> Let's give it a shot. Last name Tharp, first name Marie, with an expertise in cartography. Got a job mapping in the ocean floor, using sonar data from the Second World War, but she needed new data to complete her map. So they loaded up a research vessel ASAP. They sailed out on the sea, but they didn't bring along the ray. Oh no! They didn't let women on the research vessel, so with map making tools, Marie did wrestle. She showed it to a colleague, Bruce Hazen. He said, Marie, how could you be so brazen? She caused a commotion. When she said there was a rift valley at the bottom of the ocean, girl talk. That's what the man said. Yeah, that's what the man said. He called it girl talk. Rejected like that in two seconds flat. He called it girl talk. A valley with the rift implies continental drift. There ain't no place in science for your stubborn reliance on that girl talk. <laughs> So Marie went back to the drawing board. Literally, she had a drawing board. She checked it once and she checked it twice. To be triple sure, she checked it thrice. She took it back and she showed it to Bruce. But this time, he called the truce. He shook his head. He said, Marie, Marie, I think I owe you an apology. Your map is right, yes, I must admit. But I'm worried that this map applies continental drift. They published it anyway. Even though they knew the scientists were bound to say the same nothing but girl talk. That's what the men said. Yeah, that's what the men said. They called it Girl Talk. Rejected like that. In two seconds flat, they called it Girl Talk. A valley with the rift applies continental drift. There ain't no place in science for your stubborn reliance on that girl talk. Still one man was intrigued. He was a well-known scientific celebrity. Jacques Cousteau was his name. And undersea exploration was his game. 
Here comes our Jean Cousteau. Un, da, twa, ha, 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 ye, I'll go under the sea. I'll be sure to take Marie's map with me. I'll film it for the whole world to see. Settle this bubbling controversy. Sacre bleu, how can it be? Everything's where Marie said it would be. The Rift Valley, every mountain peak, it's enough to make a man's knees go weak. It caused a revolution. Marie Tharp's girl talk was the solution. Girl talk. That's what the man said. Yeah, that's what the man said. He called it girl talk. With photographic proof, they learned the truth. They called it girl talk. A valley with a rift proof continental drift. She changed modern science with her stubborn reliance on that girl talk. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Jacques Cousteau for making a guest appearance right there in the middle of that song. That was fun. Thank you, Jacques. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. And uh, it was a lot of fun using the electric guitar today. We might have to do that again. Okay. I might need to get a new backdrop, but oh well. <laughs> we can't get a green screen because this is Lo-Fi Science Class after all. And if I get a green screen, this guitar partially disappears, which is a really weird thing that happens. Anyway, you guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed lesson six. And uh, in the next lesson, we're going to start talking about the consequences of plate tectonics and um, what things that plate tectonics explains in our Earth and uh, the systems uh, such as earthquakes and volcanoes. Uh, so the next few episodes are going to be about those things, and there's going to be one episode that is going to be almost entirely dancing. Yeah, uh, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. So anyway, until next time, everybody, onward!